Hi everyone, welcome to the channel where we complain and celebrate how hard it is to make a webcomic or how hard it is to make art. And we're actually quite chill here. We don't have big ambitions and we have a lot of clever viewers watching these videos. So the greatest thing about this channel is actually its comment section when people really feel that they have something to add. Mostly it's something really valuable and that's why I'm making a reaction video this time because there was a video called my comic is confusing my readers <laughs> and there were a lot of good comments below that so that's why I want to appreciate these comments and reply to them with this video. Don't worry if you're if you don't want your name to be in it it won't be because I didn't ask you guys if you're okay with your name being it so I'll just make all of them anonymous. Let's see what you had to say to the subject. Just quickly recap I was complaining not really complaining I was saying I don't really know what to do because I I try everything in quotation marks in my comic to make my readers remember the names and to give them cues as to who that person is and what they have done and stuff like that so that they can follow very easily. Even though I did that or I thought I did everything I could, my readers got a bit confused. And now let's see what you guys had to say. So the first comment is... You're so generous to your readers. I give them nothing. Whatever is in my comic is what is in my comic. I'll give them additional info on the characters in my guidebooks. But that's it. Although my stories aren't really complex, there's a big bad and the protagonist must deal with the big bad. That's usually the plot of all my stories. Okay, I see. You're saying that your comic is really easy to grasp because it's so simple. It's actually quite a skill to make your comic really simple, especially if you can write a good story with only two characters. I really applaud to that. And apart from that, um, my friend, you said you're not giving them anything apart from the information in your guidebooks. What are these guidebooks? I want to see them. I want to see how you do them. <laughs> because that's actually one of my ideas that I want to give more information in a side product that is not my comic. Anyway, thank you for that comment. The next comment is, I'm not sure how true this is, but it feels like rereading is common practice with webtoons. Oh, you can be very sure of that. I totally agree. You're very right. And I'm really glad you mentioned it in the comment section. I think I said something in my video that was along the lines that I find it hard to reread webtoons because of the format or actually because of their UI, their user interface. It's not so easy to get around. But I do agree that I go reread webtoons all the time and I'm sure a lot of people do it. At least you and me, we are doing it. So a lot of people might be doing it. Yeah, I'm really glad you said that. To add one more thing to that, it's probably good to not always give the readers the answer so that they might feel motivated to go back and reread it. It gives you clicks, but also it makes them understand the story more as a whole. Okay, so this comment is referring to the character that people didn't recognize. They are reading my comic. They're so cool. So they say, I recognized him immediately, but what confused me a bit is that he looks way older for me in the latest chapter than in the beginning. Oh no, I know why. <laughs> I'll tell you in a second. Then it goes on. That's why I thought there was a time jump in the future. But I agree with the comments here. You can't make your comic bulletproof so that everyone gets everything. It really depends on how carefully the reader is reading. How fast? Everything at once or only when new chapters are updated. That is so true. And actually, I guess if your comic is really good and people feel it's worth their time, they would probably reread it as the last commenter said. And it's really interesting that you thought he looks older. It's a consistency question, especially with that character, because he was one of these I was completely pantsing with. I did not plan this character. He has a certain role in the comic. That role was already given to someone else, but I didn't have him. So I kind of drew him the first time and then I thought, mm, I could actually, I could actually use this guy later on. And then, um, yeah, it just so happened that he's now going to be quite an important role in the comic. And uh, I guess once you start to know properly how to draw your characters, they will look slightly different than when you first draw them, especially if you don't have any character sheets. And I didn't have a character sheet for him. Yeah, making character sheets really helps and it's really necessary. And then there is an extra bit to this 
comment, which I, I would like to read as well, because it's uh, just so funny. And it really cracked me up the first time I read it. I had a friend of mine better read my prologue of three chapters where only two characters are shown, repeating their names over and over. In the fourth chapter, she didn't recognize him and asked who he is. So yeah, some people just don't think too much about the story or characters. Dude, your friend is exactly like my friends. They would be like, oh, but who is this? It's when you actually catch them red-handed. You just skipped an entire episode because otherwise you would know this and that. Thank you so much for sharing. Then the next one is a bit longer. So it goes, it's definitely a hard thing to get right because you want your readers to remember plot points, characters, etc. But you don't want to annoy readers that are reading from the start. I like to make things so that they are easiest for the readers starting at the beginning because ultimately most readers won't be following from posting the very first episode. If there is a plot point that happened a long while ago but will be called back on, you could maybe do what animes do sometimes and have a brief previously on section that briefly shows that section. With a character it might be a bit harder but maybe a character mentioning the last time they saw them or what you've done with a distinguishable landmark can help but ultimately if the character isn't being seen frequently people will forget or since you already have a section where you speak directly to your audience at the end of the episode you could say that it calls back to episode whatever if they need a refresher since it's been a while since that particular point or character has been mentioned there's a bunch of ways to solve the problem but not all of them are going to be very good and not everyone will agree on how they'd like to be reminded of certain things so I'm really interested in what everyone else has to say also wow this is so good yeah I really like that you mentioned this previously on section there's another commentator who mentioned that and and uh, I think she's been doing it in her comic as well and also what you say about that not everyone is going to agree that's for sure I mean how many people are out there reading our comics going like yeah we get it already can you just move on I have that in a lot of newer series where things are so on the nose. And I think if I would have watched them when I was a lot younger, I might have been glad that it's so obvious. But sometimes it's just like, yeah, okay, I get it. You don't have to say it again. <coughs> Avatar life action. Let's go to the next one. I really like this one as well. I think it's fine to let people just figure it out their own. It's fun when you actually have to think about the story and it'll be more engaging, in my opinion. And at least in my experience, it doesn't take away from a story, even when you forget a character for a while. I love that comment and maybe that's all I needed to hear. I'm sometimes so in a fixing mode where I want to fix stuff and I'm like, oh no, I did that not the right way and I should do it differently. And then someone like this comes along and tells you sometimes it's fun to do hard things and, and you shouldn't always um, give people everything on a silver platter. It's not really engaging. You didn't say that, but that's just what I thought. Yeah, it's actually true that you should do that. And there is another paragraph for this comment, which I will read now. I definitely agree with your friend's perspective. A little side note, I mentioned a friend in that video who was really annoyed with everything being explained so much in my comment while some of my readers didn't understand it because I think he is very used to read very, very complicated books like Dune, for example. And that's probably one of the easiest ones he, he's reading at the moment. Okay, so I definitely agree with your friend's perspective. I remember reading this manga before that really made me feel like a dumbass because after every plot twist, they would cut to these separate characters, essentially explaining everything that just happened and all the connections as if all the readers are idiots. It annoyed me so much. I would always skip those parts. I'm quite sure that this is a very anime thing, not to be confused confused with Ghibli anime, they do it never. Ghibli never explains anything, well as far as I can tell, and in anime it's the opposite. You get so many things explained in words. I think I had this problem with Beastars, for example, the second season was quite um, 
over explained how they felt and it took away so much from the entire experience for me as well. So I can really relate to this comment and I'm really glad you left it for us. Thank you so much. The next one is my comic doesn't have a narrator. Expect when I think it's funny. And as the author, I rarely try to clarify things. So I need the readers to put two and two together sometimes. Some information I can repeat if it's organic that the characters will insist on a point and recap information that way. But if it's just something that happened some episodes ago, I'll write the episode number under the panel. Oh, like citation. And if someone wants to read what I'm referring to, they can go back and read again without me explaining again. If I'm reintroducing a character that we haven't seen a lot, I might have a character reacting to them like, ah, oh, is that rude dude <laughs> or something. The way I see it is if someone is confused in the comments, it's almost always one of two things I've explained already like 10 episodes ago or I'm about to explain and you need to be patient and wait for next week. But yeah, people are just incredible at forgetting even real basic information. I commiserate with people who have a lot of lore and characters in their comics. I think I had to laugh at the first sentence uh, where you say you don't have a narrator expect when you think it's funny. Uh, I guess you have a good sense of humor. Yeah, but basically what I get from your lines here, people just work it out yourselves. It's not necessary to spoon feed them just, or just the ones that comment because you could do it a bit more subtly like you do. You just refer them back to those panels and I guess that's quite a good way to do it. I haven't seen it very often and readers might not be so used to it, but yeah, I would be interested if they appreciate this kind of style. The next comment is, hmm, this may just be the storyteller in me talking, but I don't feel like it's necessary to go out of your way to repeat information, clarify in the comments for readers to understand for your story. If you really need something to be remembered, just cite the chapter underneath the spoken dialogue in small text and the reader can go back to that on their own. Interesting that both of you are mentioning this. Is that a thing? Is it a thing that's done in originals as well? And then the person goes, Readers, in my opinion, also have a responsibility to have basic media literacy and recognize that a creator cannot explain everything to them or else the magic of the storytelling is gone. Like seriously, the previous chapters are right there. <laughs> They're not hard to find. I don't know, whenever I find something confusing in a webcomic I'm reading, I always take the extra time to scroll back a chapter to see if I missed anything. I never blame the creator unless I sincerely could not find what I was looking for. This is so good you know i've never thought of it like that i mean creators are not always available to ask stuff and now just spontaneously i'm thinking of i don't know if you know the fan section of a jiro oda in one piece after each chapter there's a little section where he only replies to the most random questions he does not reply to serious questions and it, it's so much fun to read those and I think it's quite a statement to not reply to serious questions because he probably knows that it's somewhere in the manga you can find it and I'm quite sure you can in one piece and I really agree with this commenter that it's maybe not even in the heads of the readers that they are thinking oh this is a plot hole they might as well be blaming themselves to not understand it uh, and then this is what was replied to that comment I just read Yes, to all of this. Like, girly, I can't develop reading comprehension for you. You need to put some work into reading. Some people don't even remember the names of most characters, even main characters like, oh, I really like the brunette guy. Oh, you mean the love interest whose name has been consistently said on pretty much every episode? I don't even bother anymore. <laughs> But that was basically me as a teacher. Why? Why can't you read? But after a while, I understood that there really are people who, they're just visual in terms of they want to see images and they don't want to see text because it's just not for them. And they knowingly re read comics or read in quotation marks. They look at comics and they know they are not reading and they know they will have holes in the information they get. Actually, there's also a thing that's happening recently in the comment sections of YouTube videos and also in comics where some readers go or some viewers go, oh, I don't want to watch the entire video. Can someone summarize it for me, please? I don't want to read the entire comic. Can someone just tell me what happened? If it's a well-watched channel or if it's a popular webtoon, you would always find someone who is gonna, yeah, you know, this and that happened. <laughs> and if you're just a small series, you don't have these people to fall back on if you have any readers who don't get it. But I really agree with you that some people just aren't willing to do the reading 
I don't blame them because I get that some people just aren't born to read. It's fine. It's not so natural. But well, at least they can type comments. Then, okay, three more. So the next one is the tough thing about webcomics is you have some readers reading each episode when they come out and some readers who are reading everything all at once. It really does make it so difficult to balance the recapping. Restating information could get annoying for people reading it all at once. Not restating can make people reading each episode as it comes out confused. That's why I like putting a few panels of recap at the top of each episode. Sometimes it would just be the previous episode, but sometimes I'd go way back in the archive and remind them of something that happened 20 episodes ago to make the episode make sense. I always put the logo after the recap so someone reading straight through knows they can scroll until they see the logo. Oh, that's just so good. If they don't want the recap. But even then, it's tough to know if you're explaining enough or not. Oh my god, this is so good. It's not that much work to do that and it seems really effective. I've never thought of it like that. I read that person's comic and I never really realized that it was recapping things that happened way before because I was reading all at once and I would just skip the recap, which is already proof of the fact that this technique works, that you just put the logo and everyone who's not who doesn't have to recap is just going there. So I'll definitely look into doing that for future episodes. Okay, the next comment goes, oh, don't worry, I think you're doing great. Another side note, I hope all of this doesn't always come across as fishing for compliments. I'm just really sharing my thoughts with you. But of course, I'm happily taking the compliment. Thank you so much. Uh, the amount of information you're giving fits well with the situation and is well dosed. I have to admit, I'm a bit behind. It's fine, don't worry. Uh, but what I've seen so far has been very clear. Good to know. The real issue for me is a break between episodes. That's why I usually wait until a series is complete before I read or watch it. Also great to know. So everyone who is worried about the readers not returning weekly. So listen to it again. That's why I usually wait until a series is complete before I read or watch it, as I tend to forget half of it. Same here. Don't worry, your readers will understand. And even if they don't, that's okay. The best movies are the ones where each viewer has completely different interpretations of the story. Also, this gives the readers a reason to reread your series. Thank you so much. I got really nice and cozy over here over that comment. And just when I'm reading this, I had the movie Inception or Interstellar popping into my mind because, well, my first sittings of these movies were like, oh, I like what I'm seeing on this screen. Oh, these are cool images. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at the end, I liked what I saw. I felt mentally challenged, but I didn't really understand in both films. And I had to watch them at least a second time to really get to the core of everything. I do have a bird brain. And it's true that it's fun to reread and rewatch stuff that we liked, but didn't entirely understand and then see everything properly the second time. Thank you so much. Your comment is appreciated. Okay, and this is the last one. And it says, I think the way you approach dropping information isn't bad at all. Some readers just tend to forget about little details like that because they read the episodes quite quickly. Thanks again. <laughs> I feel perfect now. Oh, I don't have to change anything about my comic. Let's go on. Of course, this doesn't apply to everyone, but in my experience and for my own webtoon, I do notice that most readers speed read a bit. Overall, your webtoon is engaging and is really good in terms of giving the readers suspense and curiosity. Oh, I'm so glad to read that. Since we have reached the end of the comments, I think someone wrote that uh, that one thing I do is really interruptive, but I don't really know where that comment went. So I'll just summarize it for you. So the thing is, I split my episodes into half to be a bit more exposed on the page so that people would have more chances to see my series. What this includes is that every half of the episode, I would put my little mascot crow that says, hey, the next part will be up on Thursday so that people could come back. And I guess if you're reading it weekly, so the moment the episode drops, then it's probably not as bad. But what's really bad is when you reread it, then at every at the end of every half episode, there would be the crow saying, it's coming on Wednesday. 
that comment really helped me to catch that quicker because it was in the back of my mind that I probably should remove those after a while. I've done it straight after I saw that comment, so it's even worse that I can't find it right now. Oh, actually, I think it's in the in my latest video, that's why I can't find it here. Anyway, great advice altogether. What I will take from these is that it's not so bad if readers have to reread stuff and I take from that that you have the same problem with people who just forget everything you put there for them. Most importantly, I guess I will take from that that it's a good idea to add some recaps every now and then. And I guess what I've planned with that character overview and with that recap thingy after my hiatus that's coming up. Yeah, it will make sense to do that. That's it for this video. I hope you had fun with these comments. Um, thank you for making my content more valuable by adding your opinion in the comment section. And I wish you a great weekend. Go outside a bit. Watch Eurovision Song Contest tomorrow. It's so much fun. You have to see it. And what else? Keep drawing and don't give up even if not all your readers get your story. Bye-bye.